Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little lockdown project video here. Uh, this is my pedal board. Um, I've been working on it a bit, and I think it does some things that are kind of interesting uh, that I haven't seen anybody else do. So I thought I'd show you how it works. So one, one step at a time. Uh, first, the, the input over here is coming into uh, a SY1 synthesizer pedal. Um, that pedal, uh, I'm gonna describe later, but the, the thing we need to know, know about it immediately is that it immediately branches out into a, um, an effects loop. And that effects loop is the dry guitar signal that goes in the synth pedal. So effectively, uh, this is my, my dry signal except for the synthesizer pedal and the, uh, and the flashback, the delay at the very end. So let me go through that sequence and then you'll see how it comes back to the synth pedal eventually and I'll tell you some things, interesting things about control. So as soon as it comes out of the synth pedal, here's, here's coming out of guitar sound. It comes out and it goes into this Brainwaves pitch shifter pedal, uh, which I'll turn on briefly, which I use for a lot of things. And uh, it's a nice little pedal and does some cool stuff. Uh, and it has, um, it also has the effect of being a a, uh, a, a kind of whammy because you, you can it's got a mash pedal so you can go and you can uh, use that to go up or down and lots of other sideways things uh, it's uh, basically uh, a pressure sensitive pedal so so it effectively does what a whammy would do without having to have the space taken up in a whammy and I don't use a whammy that often so so it's not that useful so uh, it's a little funky to turn it off sometimes you gotta really hit it just really just right to get it to turn it off so we go out of that, and then, believe it or not, we go into this freakout pedal. And uh, that's a pretty easy pedal. Let me get some distortion in here, and you'll kind of see what it does. It, uh, if I do a note. It's a, a feedback simulator pedal, so I can get feedback at any volume. And I love this pedal. It was a birthday gift from a friend, and I, I really, really uh, enjoy playing it at bedroom volumes and being able to do feedback. So that's that. Um, now... Now comes kind of some of the cool bits. Um, I go into my vintage um, Jim Dunlop uh, Crybaby pedal from there, and uh, if I click it on, it's a nice little wah-wah pedal, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, it, I bought it back in the 70s, so I think that counts as vintage now. So that's the, where that goes next. So that's wah before dirt, and we're about to get to dirt. Um, I used to do dirt before wah. It's completely wrong. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, wah before dirt is right. So you come into that, and then you go into this LS2 uh, selector pedal. Now that is the real key to uh, what I'm doing here. When it's off, that's my clean sound. That gives me my clean sound. When it's on, what's happening is this pedal actually controls two effects loops, two more effects loops. And when I go, out, I go straight out of that, and into this, um, and, and by the way, I'm in the mode where effectively both the effect sleep come on when you switch the thing on, and these two uh, knobs give you a mix, and I keep them kind of at nominal most of the time. Then it comes out, and it goes into this, and this is kind of the key, is I go into my uh, old uh, VL10 Ibanez uh, volume pedal, and this thing does one really weird thing. It is like two volume pedals for two different signals, if you've got it in balance mode. So I've got it in balance mode. So what's happening is when tip down, the A signal chain is all the way up and the B signal chain is all the way down. Tip up, the B signal chain is all the way up and the A signal chain is all the way down. So effectively, this is fading between these two effects loops. So I have an interesting bit of control here. That's where I go into A is my vintage tube screamer that I've had forever and I, I just love as a pedal. It's a great pedal um, and I've been using it forever. And B goes into this uh, reissue Big Muff Pie Triangle, probably my favorite Big Muff Pie uh, type sound. Ram's Head's really nice too, but, but they're both good. So what I have the ability to do, and this is the cool bit, is uh, all the way forward I've got... <laughs> That's pure Tube Screamer. If I pull it all the way back, I've got... That's pure Big Muff, but I can fade them in. So I, 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 And I do this dynamically while I'm jamming. I basically can go in and say, okay, let, let me give you 25% kind of uh, Big Muff, and then I get some things like this. So you get 
get the big muff sustain, but the, the hit from the tube stringer. So now I've got... <laughs> And I can um, I can even like go really much. And I can do that all dynamically. So I've got stacked. And uh, a little advice on stacking um, stacking these pedals. Actually, I've got it a little off where I'd usually put it. The thing is, try to have the tone tone setting in two different two different places. That's my best advice for doing a parallel of two fuzz pedals. Is so, so basically, that's Big Muff. That's a two screamer. This is Big Muff. Got somewhere in between. I've got so many different fuzz sounds, and I can I can. To vary those dynamically. If I want to um, do something else, I could take um, the uh, one of them out, and then then on one end I've got clean. On the other end I've got dirt. So I can dynamically control the amount of dirt. I can do it the other way around, and say on this end I've got clean. I can do all those things. I can even set this up as a volume pedal just by varying one of these. So I can do tons and tons of cool stuff. So after I come to those, I go back into this, of course, closing out those two loops. Then I come out of that and go into the Mod 11, which is basically a, a multi-purpose modulation pedal. So I can get, you know, every kind of modulation you can imagine. Uh, and uh, phaser flanger, Univibe, everything. That pedal does everything. And it's it's a uh, pretty good for a digital pedal. Uh, I'd probably get a better sound if I was on a vintage uh, kind of pedal of any of those kinds. But then, where's the board space for all those different pedals? So that's that's good. So after it comes out of that, it goes into my tuner, believe it or not. And the reason for that is that makes this this pedal a mute. And uh, I use that for very particular things, but I also like to be able to mute all the noise that's coming out of these pedals. And I can tune pretty well. And this Polytune 3 is, is a great, great tuner. So it's coming to that. And then out of the tuner, close out the effects loop back to the, the synth pedal. Now, this is where things get interesting. Uh, the synth pedal I've wired up in a fairly interesting way. By the way, uh, all of that goes out into my flashback. Uh, I, I like to have the echo uh, the same on uh, the synth and the, uh, and the guitar. But the cool thing that I've done here is, first of all, I've got a control cable in here that has, I think, six different ends to it that I've carved together so that um, these three pedals, the, the Flashback, the Mod 11, and the Synth, all have tap tempo. So I can tap this, and then if I turn, let me turn up the level on the, on the, on the um, delay a little bit, and you'll see what I say. <laughs> You'll notice the delay is set exactly where the, the modulation is. So I can go. That's not exactly a lot of feedback. Let's see if we get a little feedback. Let me see what it sounds like. You see how that goes? It's like I've synced them both up. And the same thing, the synth that does some, uh, some arpeggiation. I can sync those in all with one tap pedal. And so that, that's why I've got that tap pedal. But these over here are another thing. Let me turn that off. And let me turn my uh, echo down a bit. Uh, so here's the thing. On the synth pedal, it does lots of cool things. Like, for instance, it'll do pads. So if we turn this on, I kind of go. Nessa, I've got a nice synthy pad underneath my, my chords there. And that's kind of nice. But one of the things this thing does, it does a sample and hold function where you can basically... Uh, if it's normally configured, you hold this pedal down and it will hold whatever the last note it was playing was and you can play on top of that note. That's a nice functionality, but I didn't like the way it worked. So what I did was, uh, by using its expression control cable here and some uh, fairly clever electronics, I basically went in here and if you click that, this thing has now gone into hold mode. So now, you notice it doesn't do anything because it's holding on a blank. Yeah, I, I gave it a blank. But if I do this, if I go, 
It's now, I can get it to hold by using the momentary. So I have a, a latch switch that turns it into hold mode. And then the momentary takes it out of hold mode. So I can do things like, if I was doing some chords like... Uh, just by hitting the momentary pedal, and then it takes another sample and holds that. So that's my whole chain. That's what I do. Most of the time, uh, you'll find me just doing this. Right about there. Where I've got uh, a little bit of MF and a little bit of Tube Screamer. That's my standard sound. But then I've got all this other cool stuff I can play with. So that's my pedal board. Um, hope you enjoyed that video and uh, that you experiment some with your own. Take care. Bye.